Uh, hello, Dr. Do Dr. Roshan, it's a pleasure to hear from you. Wonderful. But uh, unfortunately for myself, I've got a bit of a problem with this uh, Medicare turnover or ch change. I've just got diagnosed last week with a probable back surgery requirement. And I'm pretty uncertain about what's going to happen now. Mm. I've got, well, it's obviously going to cause distress. It's cost, so far, I paid a lot of money to find out where I'm at. And I know I don't want, I'd like to know how much I'm going to pay in the future. Mm. It's a minefield, and I reckon there's a lot of people, a lot of people out there worried about this minefield right now. And I'd like to see something happen about it. We need a white minesweeper or something. But what do you see as a future way of giving uh, people in a dodgy situation with a changing policy every moment some sort of confidence so that they get stressed and depressed and so forth? How, Peter, how are you, mate? Your, your back's not not good. Oh, how, how are you faring? I've got I've got a vertebrae that's causing my uh, my feet not to feel anything at all. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and a lot of uncertainty at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and of course, I know other people in similar situations. Mm. Indigenous people as well. Depression mm. is the outcome. Mm. And you see it in the River Murray. You see suicides because of that sort of stuff. I, I'll, I'll get Omar to comment on that. Can I just ask, are people aware at the moment? Um, and I've, I've spoken to a few, few people about this who, who weren't necessarily aware about the changes that are coming to the uh, medical benefits screen, the Medicare. No? So hands up. Who, who's aware? Okay. No, a lot of people are unaware at the moment, Omar. That, that may be the point that you've been making about the lack of awareness and the lack mm. of consultation. Yeah, so look, thanks for the question and I hope uh, our... Uh, world-class health system is able to, to look after you uh, when you eventually uh, get your surgery done, if that's what you need. Um, when it comes to Medicare, we've got to remember Medicare is a, an insurance system for our private sector. So public hospitals are completely separate to Medicare and public hospitals need money. They need investment and that's a, a topic that I spoke a lot about at the press club yesterday. Uh, when it comes to the Medicare benefit schedule, it's old. Uh, it's, it's 30 years old. <laughs> and it needed some reform. And the AMA has certainly supported that reform. What we've struggled with uh, in the last week or so is the way that government implements change. Uh, a lot of changes, a thousand, almost a thousand changes to the schedule. But the, uh, the, the government does say there was a, there's a task force. The task force is consulted. Was. There was consultations with the AMA as well. Was that not enough? Uh, doctors have been involved in the process and AMA has actually supported the process. But what we've been saying for three years is when you bring in a thousand changes, that means uh, our insurance companies have to change their computer systems. Our doctors have to work out what their fees are going to be. We have to know what the insurance company is going to pay in order to be able to have a conversation with a patient about how much they might have to pay, whether there might be any out-of-pocket costs. Right now, I can't tell you what the fees are for the operations that I do with the health insurers because none of them have published them as yet. Uh, Medicare only came out uh, a little while ago with its, uh, with its information. So the good news is we have uh, been heard by government finally after three years of talking. It took it uh, getting out uh, into the media for it to be uh, resolved and the government have committed to doing better in the future for the next change and the one after that. Uh, doing better and also allowing us to review the changes that have been made to make sure that they are fit for purpose. Where mistakes have been made, and there are some mistakes, uh, they can be quickly fixed mm. uh, so that we can uh, make sure our Medicare schedule supports Australia's health into the future. Camelini, one of the things that you've raised, and we mentioned this throughout COVID as well, is the question of, of trust um, and that Medicare is a, is a question of trust. It's part of the compact, the social contract of Australia. So, when you see changes like this, and the government says, look, these changes are necessary because of the changes to procedures and some procedures becoming more effective, easier to do and so on. What does that do to that question of trust? I think it's about communication and transparency and how decisions are made. And I think that governments now know that Medicare is something you don't, you don't be seen to be touching, seen to be undermining. Mm. Um, from none of you are old enough, including me, but the, prior to Medicare, the most common cause of non-criminal imprisonment in Australia was unpaid medical debt. We don't want to go back to that. And a, a, good, a, a large part of our success with COVID or any other public health measure is that there has been this long relationship of reciprocity. When, when you want to go to the doctor, when you need care for your child, you know you'll get good care and you'll know you'll be able to afford it or it will be given to you. Now that builds a relationship of trust that governments then 
when they ask us to do things like stay home, like, you know, get tested, we do. And I think that doing things that aren't, aren't transparent to those who will implement those changes, aren't understood by the community, people like you, Peter, undermines the, that trust. And, you know, Medicare is something, it, it, it represents universal health care. It mm. represents equality in access to a critical uh, human right. So I think the government needs to do a better job and I hope they hope they hear the voices of not just yeah. Omar but much more people yeah, like and, Peter. And, and Peter, I'm, you know, I'm sorry that the answer, that necessarily the answer to your question, I think, I think as Omar said, we just don't know um, no, about the yeah. costs of those procedures. Sally? I mean, I just don't want us to end up like the US. Yeah, yeah exactly. Can I just comment? I, I think it's quite interesting that these are routine updates to the medical benefits scheme that had the support of the medical community, but in, in the last week it turned into a bit of a political football. And so I find it very difficult on this question of trust. Um, we've, we've seen the Medi-Scare campaign come back, which is, you know, all this is an, is an implementation issue, an administrative issue that just needs a little bit more time, but it's become a political football. Well, so on the question of trust, you know, I think people are going to start seeing through it if that's how our politicians want to deal with health issues. We and, actually and, you need know, to learn how to implement reform in health and how, in fact, in government. We, we need to yeah. work out how to make change without it being uh, uh, having a great big target uh, uh, right. on its back. Well, uh, and that, that has been very difficult. Medicare is this sacred cow. Well, we're almost out of time. It's, it's the third rail, isn't it? I mean, you touch Medicare in an election time, it can be... Political suicide. That's right, and you know, uh, one of the political achievements of Greg Hunt as health minister is he has neutralised health as a political issue for the Liberal Party because Labor had a strong brand advantage there. That's been pretty much neutralised. The last thing politically that this government wants to do is get people anxious about Medicare. 